What's up mobile devs, I hope you're doing well. Today I want to create with you this simple but very useful shake animation. The goal of the tutorial will be to extract this logic into a custom hook that you can then use for your own apps. This tutorial is also a great opportunity to explore the main high order functions of free animated, such as with timing, with spring, with sequence and with repeat. If you are one of my patrons, you probably already know that I really love this shaking concept and I apply it often to my animations. If you're not, then you have one more reason to support me on Patreon. Before moving on, I just want to say that you can find a lot of React Native content on reactive.io, including some written tutorials. And with that said, we can finally move on to the code part. Here I've created a React Native project with the Expo CLI, and I've already installed the reanimated package. So you can see that uh, we are using a version of Expo above the 50 version of the Expo SDK, and that means that for the first time we are not uh, anymore forced to add the reanimated plugin because it will be included by default. Uh, of course, if you're using a version that is under the uh, 50 uh, version of the Expo SDK, you need to add the reanimated plugin in the bubble config.js, otherwise reanimated will not work as expected. That said, I think uh, we can already start to customize a bit the UI. So um, let's get rid of this text and let's actually start to add our text uh, again in order to, um, uh, let's say, have the number in it. So we are going to have 100 just as a mock value for now. Let's uh, increase the font size. Uh, let's uh, increase even more the font size to 90. Uh, let's make the font bold. Uh, and let's use a black color. So maybe even 96, it's fine. So uh, at this point, we are simply going to need the, the um, button. We are just going to place one button for now, and we are going to implement first the animation by tapping on the button. We are going to shake the, the text, and then we are going to uh, effectively add the, the logic for the on increment and on the current button. So let's actually uh, refactor a bit the code. Let's say styles dot text text number just to keep things easier. And let's add the uh, the button. So we are going to wrap the uh, we are later going to wrap the two buttons uh, in a view. So let's uh, define here the touchable opacity that will be our button. Let's say height uh, equal to uh, sixty four. Uh, with, uh, let's say, aspect ratio equal to 1. It is identical to say with, uh, equal to, um, with equal to 64. Then we can define the background color. Let's say uh, black for now. Uh, since we want a rounded button, let's say border radius equal to 32. That is basically 50% of the height and the width. And then since we want to place the button, um, at the bottom right, we can simply add the position uh, position absolute, and let's say uh, right equal to forty eight, and bottom equal to forty eight. So uh, that's not working simply because we have our styles uh, container that is centering everything. So we are wrapping everything with the, the styles dot container and we simply need to remove the justify content and align items. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, we are doing something, uh, uh, we are doing another mistake here. So um, we are applying the position absolute to this touchable opacity, but this touchable opacity is wrapped within this view. So let's move this style to this view. And there we go. Yeah, so it was correct to apply the align item center and justify content center because we are centering effectively the text. Uh, but we don't want to apply the position absolute to this button because later we are going to add uh, another button right there. So let's keep everything uh, as it is for now. So let's refactor the, um, the styles. Let's define the styles.buttons container. So buttons container, and we are going to have this one right here. And then let's define the button style. And the copilot is guessing everything right today. 
So let's say styles.button, and there we go. So um, at this point, what do we want to do? We want for now just to tap on the button and to shake this text. So in order to achieve that, let's start first of all to create our shake callback. And here we are going to add, uh, we are going to shake the number. And let's do, let's bind the shake callback to this touchable opacity. So let's say shake. So um, what we need to understand is that basically shaking an object, shaking a React Native component or an object uh, in general means just uh, animating the translate X property because we want to uh, animate the, uh, the object on the X axis. So what we are going to do is to create a shared value that is going to represent the translate text that we want to shake. So let's uh, define the shared value called uh, um, shake translate X. And uh, uh, basically the shared value, uh, the shared value is uh, an object defined from reanimated. Uh, if you're not familiar with this concept, uh, feel free to check out my series uh, uh, animate with reanimated. Uh, I'm going to add everything in the video description. And the point is that uh, what we are going to do right now is that we are going to update this uh, shake translate X inside the shake callback. And later we are going to apply the shake translate X to this text right here. So what we want to do is that, uh, uh, for instance, for now, let's simply update the shake translate X value equal to 100. And we want to pass this uh, shake translate X to this text. To do that, uh, we need to create a reanimated style. We are going to pass the shake translate X inside the reanimated style, and then we are going to apply the style to this text. So let's do reanimated shake style, use animated style. Use animated style is a hook defined, uh, is a hook provided by reanimated. Uh, it helps us to create a style with the same properties of a normal style sheet from reanimated, uh, from React Native. Uh, but the point is that this style will support uh, also the shared values. So we cannot pass directly this transform X to this style, otherwise it will not work. The animation will not work. So uh, the last step, the last ingredient, as always, is to pass this uh, shake style to this text. But before doing that, we need to remember that uh, since this uh, shake style is an animated style, we need to convert this text into an animated text. So let's update this text into an animated text. Of course, we always need to import animated from reanimated and not from React Native. And that said, we can finally apply the reanimated shake style right here. So when we are going to press this button, we are going to call the shake function and the shake function should displace the translate text of this text to 100. And if we tap, we can see that everything is working correctly. Of course, uh, I mean, everything is working correctly, but uh, we want to do a shake animation. And right now we are simply displacing the uh, shake or the, the text to 100. So let's define here so let's remove this comment. Let's define the translation amount because we are going to use this 100 a lot. And let's say that what we want to do is that we want to animate with the timing transition the translation amount, the shake translate X to the translation amount. So let's say translation amount. So what we can see is that right now we are applying a timing transition. But what we want to do at this point is that we want to shake the object. Shaking means that we want to translate to the right and also to the left. Intuitively, we can simply do shake translate X value equal with timing minus translation amount. But the truth is that if we are going to call both together, these two animations are going to be executed in parallel. And uh, uh, the second one is going to be, have the priority because it is probably going to be executed later. So we need to find a way to animate everything into a sequential way. And fortunately, there is an extremely helpful hook from Reanimated that is called 
uh, not hook, uh, uh, I mean ho um, high order function that is called with sequence from reanimated. And I think this is the first time that we see this hook on this channel. So the with sequence is very helpful to um, apply sequence uh, sequential animations. And the trick is that we want to wrap this first animation to the transmission amount, and we want to apply again the with timing with the minus transmission amount. So let's reload. And we see that uh, right now, both of the transitions are uh, applied uh, into a sequential way. So shaking requires uh, a bit more than that. So Copilot is guessing what we want to do. You can see that the Copilot simply wants to repeat again and again the, um, uh, the with timing transition. And that's almost fine. But fortunately, Reanimated help us with uh, another high order function called with repeat. So what we want to do is that we want to repeat a specific amount of time, the transition between the right and the left. So what we are doing basically is that we are wrapping the with timing minus transition amount with the, with the repeat. And you can see with repeat is imported from reanimated. And then here we want to provide the number of repetitions. So we want to, let's say we want to shake three times everything. And we have the option to apply a reverse property. So we are going to need this reverse property, but let's set everything to false just to understand why we are going to need it. So if you see, look at everything closely, you can see that we are applying the animation from the right to the left, from the right to the left, but we want to enable the reverse property because we want to apply the animation from the right to the left and in reverse from the left to the right. So let's apply true here. And we can see that everything is almost working perfectly. And in the very end, what we want to do is that, of course, we want to place again the object at the center. And to achieve that, Copilot today wants to get uh, everything. We need to apply the width timing to zero because we want to reset back the shake translate x value to the value zero. So let's reload. And you can see that everything is working perfectly. So um, usually what I like to do a bit more is to play a bit more with the timing configuration because currently, of course, this shake transition is working correctly, but uh, it is not a real shake transition. The shake transition, uh, the shake uh, animation usually uh, is a bit more uh, uh, fancy, uh, uh, has a bit more bouncing in it. So what we want to do is that we want to play a bit more with the timing config. So we are going to apply the same timing config to this with timing and to this one. So let's create here a timing config object and it will have a duration. So let's apply a duration of uh, uh, 80 milliseconds. So let's apply everything here and let's reload. And you can see that uh, the animation is a bit faster than it was previously. Uh, what I like to do is that I like to decrease a bit uh, this uh, translation amount. And you can see that we are almost there. So maybe we can also say 20 probably is better. And in the end, what I also like a lot is to define this uh, easing function. So here we are going to have the auto completion. And you can see that we have the easing property from reanimated. And we can define easing dot uh, a lot of different curves. What I really love to do is to apply a Bezier uh, easing because we are going to have a full control over the curve that we want to use for this animation. So here you can see that we can apply a bunch of values. And uh, uh, in order to decide these values, usually I go to this website called cubicbezier.com. And you can see that here, I have uh, defined already my pre-built curve. And the point is that we want to apply an animation curve that starts slowly, then increases, and then uh, again, close uh, slowly the transition. But of course you can update as you want this, uh, this curve and you can simply copy these values and this is going to be more than enough. So let's avoid that uh, since I have already copied the easing that I want. So let's uh, paste here our easing our busy curve 
and let's apply here the time config again. So here, I guess we need Copilot will not help us. So we need to apply DPC and uh, we are going to have 0 0.35, 0 0.7, 0 0.5 and 0 0.7 again. So if we reload, we can see that the shake transition is working uh, almost perfectly, except for this one, because we are not applying the timing config to, this, uh, uh, to the latest transition from the right to the zero point. And in order to fix that, to be honest, uh, what I really like to do uh, while building a shake transition is not to apply a with timing effect, but to apply a with spring to zero with a mass equal to 0 0.5. Uh, of course, uh, the spring animations are very different from the timing animations. Uh, the spring animations are based on the physics, uh, but with reanimated, you can also define the spring transition based on uh, uh, based on the duration and so on. But what I like to do is to keep the physics uh, uh, options, and in this case, I like to simply define a spring animation with an object that has a uh, uh, fifty percent of mass, and you can see that the transition is working smoothly. So of course, currently the shake transition is working correctly, but since this is a pattern that I love to apply a ton of times, what I like to do is to wrap this whole logic inside a hook called the use animated shake. So let's define it. Let's create first the hooks folder and let's create here the use animated shake.ts file. So here we are going to have the hook use animated shake. And uh, let's copy basically everything that we have defined right there. So we are going to import the shared value, use shared value, use callback. This one, this easing from reanimated with sequence all the high order functions. And let's import also this use animated style. So here we can simply return what we are going to use effectively. So the shake function and the reanimated shake style. And we can import again the use animated shake. So yeah, we need to export it. Too. So we can import the use animated shake. We can import the shake function, the reanimated shake style. And there we go. So you can see that everything is working as expected as it was working previously, but right now we have a nice hook that we can use in a lot of different scenario. So let's get rid of all these imports. And right now we can finally focus on the uh, completion of our, uh, our animation. So here we want to uh, we want basically not to run the shake transition. We want to have the increment operation. And we want to have, we want to add also the on decrement. So uh, I've added the two buttons. We need to apply to the buttons container the flex direction row. Uh, we can apply, I think, the gap uh, property equal to eight. And this one is going to wrap a plus icon. Uh, so um, here, what I like to do since we're using Expo is that I like to uh, go to icons.expo, uh, FYI, and then I like to copy these icons. So I've selected the plus icon from Entypo. So let's import uh, Entypo. We need to import it from Expo Vector Icons. Uh, let's use white color, 32. And we need to center the uh, the icon. And here, let's wrap everything with the name minus. So we need to apply the on decrement and on increment function. So let's define the, uh, actually, let's first define our count state. So let's say use state equal to zero, count set count. Let's define the on increment with the use callback. So here, Copilot is guessing everything almost right. 
uh, but we want to uh, define the set count uh, by passing a function because we don't want to depend on the count uh, that we have right here. And let's define the on decrement. So we can pass, we can bind these two callbacks. So here we are going to have the on increment since it's going to be the plus icon. And here we want to have the on decrement. And of course we want to pass the count to the, uh, instead of 100. So let's reload again. So we can, uh, we can increase and we can decrease the number. And what we want to do is that we want to apply the shake animation just if we are in the zero state. Basically, we don't want to accept negative numbers. So we need to update a bit this function right here. Perfect. So uh, if the previous number is equal to zero, we don't want to decrement. We want to shake the number and then we want to return the same number. Otherwise, we want to decrement the number. So let's reload. So here, if we increase, everything is working correctly. If we decrease, you can see that we are shaking correctly the number. So one interesting additional thing is that in this specific case, uh, as we have seen at the very be beginning of the tutorial, what, it, what can be very interesting is to apply also a color animation to this number. And to do that, uh, in my opinion, it is worth to avoid updating the shake style directly because uh, uh, the shake transition, in my opinion, is just about the animation on the translate text. Uh, but what we can do is that we can expose uh, um, a shared value that is that will be called uh, is shaking. So here we need to apply use the right value and we need to return uh, when it is shaking. So we know that uh, it will shake when the shake translation, when the shake translate X is going to be different than zero. So let's say is shaking. So just uh, for your information, um, here we are always forced to use uh, use the right value because uh, something like that, uh, something like this, will not work. Uh, since uh, uh, the uh, this is the let's say React Native context, and uh, we are not going to listen for the updates on the um, reanimated values. So if you will want to listen for the updates on the re on the reanimated context for the shared values, we are always forced to use the use the right value. Uh, this is a kind of a use minimo for shared values. And here we can take the is shaking and we can create a new style. So let's say reanimated error style with use animated style. And we can update basically the color if it is shaking. So if it's shaking, we are going to have a red color. Otherwise, we are going to have a black color. And we can apply the reanimated error style uh, right here. So let's say, so if we increase, everything is correct. If we decrease, you can see that we have our transition to red color. We can also apply timing animation here. Let's say timing animation with a duration of, uh, let's say, 50 milliseconds. So here, I'm not sure why it is taking so long to update the, I think it's my connection, but let's uh, pr press minus, and you can see that uh, everything is working correctly. So I really hope that uh, this tutorial was clear, and uh, if you have liked uh, of course, feel free to subscribe to the to the channel. If you want to support me, uh, you can also uh, subscribe to Patreon. And uh, if you have new ideas for upcoming content on the channel, don't forget to write them in the section below.